Imagine finding out a book on your shelf is wrapped in, you guessed it, human skin. It sounds like something from a horror movie, right? Well, Harvard University just had to remove one such book from their collection. Let's unpack this eerie tale and see what it tells us about history, ethics, and believe it or not, ourselves. Okay, let's zoom in on the book in question for a sec. De Destiné de l'Homme, which translates to The Destinies of the Soul in English. Arsène Houssay, a French poet known for his dramatics, sat down in the 1880s to pen something that's not just another book. The book is a deep meditation on life after death, exploring various religious, philosophical, and scientific perspectives on the afterlife, reflecting the author's journey and contemplations that were influenced by the loss of close ones and encounters with different belief systems. But here's where it gets extra spicy. With all its pondering about the soul's journey beyond death, the book itself is wrapped in mortality, human skin to be exact. Now, if that doesn't make you pause and think, I don't know what will. It's like Husai, or more accurately, Dr. Boulogne, wanted to ensure the book's form matched its thematic heart. Through stories, reflections, and philosophical musings, the destinies of the soul challenges readers to confront their beliefs about death and what lies beyond. Now, Husai didn't decide to wrap his writing in human flesh. The man behind this eerie choice, Dr. Ludovic Bulan, is the mind behind that. He inserted a note inside the book explaining why he thought one of his deceased patient's skin was the ideal covering for these particular musings on the soul's afterlife. Imagine flipping through the pages and finding that explanation. Now, this practice, known as anthropodermic bibliopegy, might sound like a modern horror story invention, but it's got historical legs. It stretches back to the 16th century. But why, you might ask? Well, it was partly about making a statement. Whether it was a mark of respect, a punishment for the deceased, or a way to preserve history, the reasons vary and are as fascinating as they are macabre. Now, Fast forward to the Victorian era, a time obsessed with both the macabre and the scientific. This period saw a peak in the practice, with books on anatomy, crime, and punishment frequently getting the human skin treatment. And during this time, the line between educational and grotesque blurred dramatically, with these books serving as both. But let's not forget Dr. Boulogne's peculiar choice. By binding the destinies of the soul in human skin, he made a profound, if unsettling, statement on the physical and the metaphysical. It was as if he intended to merge the book's exploration of the soul's destiny with a once living person's tangible corporeal remains. It's a chilling reminder of the mortality and lengths people will go to come to terms with the concept of afterlife. And this takes us to the deep end of a large pool, the ethical handling of human remains in academic and cultural collections. Picture Harvard University, a bastion of knowledge, suddenly in the eye of a hurricane over a book bound in human skin. It's not just about one book, it's about how we respect those who've gone before us. Harvard's introspection led to discovering more remains, sparking a fierce debate. On one side, we have voices urging for repatriation and reinterment of human remains, advocating for a return to their country of origin and perhaps a respectful burial. And then there's the camp that sees educational value in these artifacts. They argue that such remains when displayed with context can teach us invaluable lessons about history, science, and humanity. It's a delicate balance, trying to honor the dead while benefiting the living through learning. And this isn't a new dilemma. Museums and universities worldwide are wrestling with these questions, pushed by growing awareness and the calls of communities and activists. It's about more than just bones and books. It's about confronting the shadows of colonialism, unethical scientific practices, and the objectification of human beings. So what's the path forward? It's a tangled one for sure, and it involves dialogue, lots of it, between institutions, descendants, communities, and ethicists. It's about crafting policies that are as just and fair as possible, acknowledging when we faltered and striving to improve. And it's about education, teaching the next generation, not just the facts of history, but the empathy and respect that must accompany them. And as we consider these questions, remember, the debate around the destinies of the soul and Harvard's human remains prompts us to ask broader questions. How will we answer them? We'll say much about who we are and what we value. 
So, what are your thoughts on how to handle anthropodermic books? Should we bury them or display them? Sound off in the comments. Of course, like, share, and subscribe to keep up with future videos. Your support means a lot. And until next time, maybe this video is up your alley.